What is up guys, it's that GTA fan 720 and here's an example of tech journalism at its worst. Now, I haven't done any type of rant in the past about a lot of different journalism websites and I have nothing against BGR.com or this particular person who did this quote-unquote journalistic article. This person says the Galaxy Note 8 is great, but it should not even exist. Now, I have not read this article, and you might be thinking, wait a minute, you're going to make a video about an article you haven't read. Well, let's just go ahead and together see what this article says, because if you see a title like so-and-so shouldn't exist, or so-and-so, you know, shouldn't be allowed to blank, you're going to be intrigued, and you're going to want to click on this article, which means more ad revenue, more money. For the people who made this. Oh, and look at this. Isn't this cute? Look at this. The Galaxy Note 8 is great, but it should not even exist. And then you can tell the site has sold its soul to LG for the LG V30. Nothing against the V30. The V30 looks like a great phone, and so does the Galaxy Note 8. But let's like read this together. Let's see what this is, uh, what, what is this person's point for saying the Note 8 is completely useless and should not exist? So, the Galaxy Note 8 is probably Samsung's best phone of the year, and you can read through our Galaxy Note 8 review here to see why. So you just said that the Galaxy Note 8 is the best phone Samsung made this year, which is how the Notes always work. The Note 7 was the best phone of 2016, Note 5 was the best phone of 2015, etc., etc., that's how it works. It's their highest end flagship phone. It's their most expensive. It has the most features. Obviously, it's the best. That said, the phone should not even exist anymore. At least not until Samsung is ready to do something more innovating. Hey, company, you're not innovating enough. You're not innovating enough. Samsung, one of the most innovative companies of the entire phone industry, you're not innovating enough. You can't, you're not. You shouldn't be allowed to make phones until you're innovating. Um, I'm not the one to pull out the Apple versus Samsung card, but did someone go to Apple in 2015 or 2016 and say, "Hey, iPhone 7, iPhone 6s, you didn't innovate this year. No wireless charging." As of the 6S, no waterproof. As of the 7, no headphone jack. Those aren't innovations. Use the same design for three years. That's not innovation. Apple, you should stop making phones because you're not innovating enough. What? What? Um, wait a minute. Okay, I need to look at this. What does my face look like? Oh my god. So, what person says this? This sounds like the kind of person who says, oh, I can't afford to upgrade right now, so they should stop making phones until my contract says that I can upgrade. Then they can release a new phone. Because we all know, companies release new phones every year, sometimes multiple phones every year. In the case of Samsung and LG, they, they release phones at the beginning and at the end quarter of the year. Should they not be allowed to make phones unless they make a phone every two years? No, because that's stupid. And here's this argument, quote-unquote argument. This is not an argument, obviously. But let's hear this guy out. What, what does he have to say? Why would I argue that Samsung's best phone should not be made? Because right now, the Galaxy Note 8 is basically a bigger Galaxy S8 version. Galaxy S and Galaxy Note design and features are converging to the point where there's no excuse buying the phablet. Um, um, hmm. There's a little something uh, that he's missing uh, there's, there's a reason that the notes still sell, because you realize that for the past multiple generations, you can get a phablet from Samsung that doesn't, that isn't a note for several years, multiple generations, three different generations, because you, you clearly can't tell on your own. Galaxy S6, Galaxy S6 Edge, Galaxy Note 5. You want the big phone, get the Note 5, right? Nope, S6 Edge Plus. 
you don't want the stylus, you don't care about the stylus, get the S6 Edge Plus in 2015. 2016, Galaxy Note 7. You don't want the Note 7? Get the S7 Edge. Slightly smaller, no stylus. Couple other features. Oh, by the way, Note 7, was, was that not innovative enough for you? They innovated so much that they couldn't keep the damn thing from blowing up. Galaxy Note 5. No innovation there? Okay, you're right on that. The Note 5 didn't really do anything. Note 4. Yeah, it had quite a bit of improvements from the from the S5, but it wasn't water it wasn't water resistant. The S5 was water resistant. Why did they do that? That was really stupid of them. But you had the better build quality. Note 4 had metal on the sides. Note 4 had the leather on the back. It was fake leather, but still. Note 4 had the S Pen. Note 4 had the big display. Note 4 had Quad HD. S5 was only 1080. Oh, Note Edge. Galaxy Note Edge. Was that not innovative? Was Galaxy Note Edge not innovative? Oh, it's just a stupid curved screen. Yeah, look, now all of them have it. N Note 8. Okay, so what's not innovative? Well, it has a dual camera. It has an S Pen. Very simple upgrade. Very simple. Obviously... It's not that much different than the S8. Obviously, if you don't give a crap about the S Pen or the dual cameras, then you'd be stupid to buy this over the S8 Plus. Nobody's arguing that. Nobody's going to be buying a Note 8 because it's one inch bigger, 0.1 inch bigger. Nobody's doing that. They're buying the Note 8 because they use the stylus. And maybe there's one person stupid enough out there to buy it just because of the dual cameras. When there are plenty of other options out there. The stylus is the reason we keep the notes. You see this? What other phone has this? Go ahead, name one. I'll wait. LG Stylo V2? Oh, you mean that phone from 2014? That LG phone with the stylus from 2014? It was the size of a toothpick and it never freaking worked? What else? Any other phone? Any? Hello? No? Okay. Just the notes? Just the notes have styluses? Oh, you don't care about the stylus? Perfect. Notes not for you. But for those of us who care about the stylus, we're insignificant. We've been buying this product line since 2011, and you're, one, you're gonna say we're irrelevant? Do you not know what we just went through last year with this phone? You know why people kept their Note 7s? You know why people to this day still use their Note 7s? Not a lot. You know why Flossie Carter still has his Note 7? You know why Zach Sarnock still has his Note 7? You know why Julian still has his Note 7? You know why Erica Griffin bought the Galaxy Note Fan Edition? The S Pen. The Stylus. The one unique feature the Note has had for generations. It being big is not a feature anymore. Obviously, we've accepted that. And that's not even really a negative. I, obviously, if we bought Notes, we like big phones. Therefore, if other phones are big, we have no problem with that. But the Note did it differently. And does it differently. I apologize if this is going to be a little raw, long rant video, but still... This is just basic principles. And this isn't a matter of me being a Note fanboy. It's the same way with iPhones. Are you going to sit here and tell me that Apple shouldn't make the iPhone 8? Or actually, no. Here's a better argument. Because Apple is supposedly going to make the iPhone edition or iPhone 8, iPhone X, whatever they're going to call it, the bezel-less iPhone. And then they're going to make the iPhone 7S and 7S Plus, supposedly. Are you going to say the 7S and 7S Plus aren't innovative enough? They might have wireless charging finally, but what else? They've literally been using the exact same design for four years, and you're not going to give them you're not going to give them anything. Whereas, put a Note 8 next to a Note 7, and tell me that you can't tell the difference between the two. Seriously, tell me with a straight face that you can't tell the difference. No, you can't. And I'm not saying that because it's a different design, that makes it better. Because there are some instances 
where the new design is worse. For example, Galaxy S8, the new design's great, but those curves, the way the screen's curved, it's difficult to put a screen protector on it. It's difficult to find a good way to protect your screen, and if you drop it on just that right angle, it's going to shatter, even if you have a case, because you can't put a screen protector on it. So, let's get back to this. The Galaxy S8 is already a huge phone, and the Plus model is even, wait a minute, you're saying the regular S8 is a huge phone. Have you held an S8? Has this person actually held an S8? Now, it's your opinion, yes, you can say the S8 is a big phone. But like, you read the specs on paper and you're like, wow, 5.8 inches, that's huge. Note 5 is only 5.7, Note 7 is only 5.7. But that, that's a stretch screen. It doesn't really count in my, or you can't really call it a big screen. It's just, it's a, it's a tall screen. So the Galaxy S8 is already a huge phone. I've never heard someone with an S8 that said it was huge. Never. Ever. And the Plus model is even bigger. Well, obviously, that's how it works. Disregarding the S Pen stylus, that's been a hallmark of the Note line since introduction. The Note only has one feature that's not available on the Galaxy S8, the dual camera. Okay. Wait, disregarding the S Pen stylus. Okay, why do you buy a note then? The stylus, the S Pen. You're you're disregarding a giant hole in the phone for a for a, a stylus. That's the main reason why people. I can't get it out. The main reason why people buy your phones, the Samsung Galaxy Notes. Disregarding the stylus. This is an S6 Plus. This Note 5, when you take the stylus out, and if you fill that little hole with plastic or metal or concrete or whatever, this is an S6. This is, this is a Galaxy S6 Plus. If you take the Galaxy Note 7 and you fill that S Pen hole, it becomes a slightly bigger S... It becomes the S7 Edge Plus. It's the, it's the S7 Edge Plus. That's what it is. The Galaxy Note 7 is the S7 Edge Plus when you disregard the stylus. The Galaxy Note 1. If you disregard the stylus, it's a Galaxy S2 Plus. Same logic. You're disregarding the main thing that makes the Note a Note. That's like if you said, if you said to the iPhone, disregarding Apple... The iPhone is a waste of money. Disregarding the software, iPhones lag. What? You're completely missing the point there. Hmm. Disregarding the charging port, I can't figure out how to charge my phone. That's, that's the logic I'm getting from this. Okay. Now, if you don't care about the stylus, that's one thing. But you're seriously going to tell everyone else that you're not allowed to care about it either? That, that's that's completely ignorant. So the dual camera. Yeah, they were late to the party. Samsung did want to ship a dual camera with the Galaxy S8 this year and made such prototypes. But it ultimately chose not to do it. Wait another six months to pack it inside the Galaxy Note 8. Yeah, that's called marketing. That's called business. I'm not, I'm not blaming Samsung for that. That's just business. You know, that's just what they do. Obviously, they were going to put the more features in the more expensive model. That's how business works. And besides... There's, and for almost every feature that we've had in the Galaxy S series, it's come to the Note first. Dual cameras came to the Note first. Iris scanning came to the Note first. Uh, big phones, obviously, came to the Note first. What else? 1440p, Quad HD, came to the Note first. Lots of other things. I think the, on, the one of the only few, like, there's only a few things that came to the S before they came to the Note. Uh, wireless charging natively but on the note 4 you could add it with a with a modified back there's the edge screen that came to the note first also so yeah that's just how it works that's what they do every year and why are you bringing that up now what does that have to do with anything is this what galaxy s and galaxy note fans are in for right now yes will the future notes only bring out one major new feature compared to the same year galaxy s Next year, rumors say that the Note 9 will have a fingerprint sensor under the screen, while the Galaxy S9 sensor is still on the back.
you're just you're just I'm I'm just repeating myself at this point. I can't even I, I'm literally at a loss for words. Okay, let's let's defend what he's saying here, okay? I know this video is going to be a long video, but I don't care. I want to have the whole story here. So only bring out one major new feature compared Note 7. Note 7. Obviously, the biggest example ever. You have the sym- the symmetrical design, USB type C, iris scanning. You had the bigger battery, well, except for the S7 Edge. But you had this, the brand new stylus with twice as many pressure levels. You had HDR, Note 7 at HDR on the display. You had the, the, the more, um, you had the dual proximity sensors. So you could tell whenever your display was actually, it wasn't falsely timing out. You had the brighter display. Went up to, what, 1,000 nits, I think it was? Or 100 nits? I forgot the exact number. I don't know how nits work. But you have all those features. And you're saying, oh, the notes don't give anything new. Or they give one or two things new. Um, did you forget how to count? Now, I know what he's saying here. He's saying in future. He's saying are in the future, they're just going to tone down everything. But you can't really judge the Galaxy Note 9 and Note 10 because of the way the Note 8 is. Try guessing the Galaxy... Like, go back in time when the Galaxy Note 3 came out and try to guess the Galaxy Note 5, 6, 7. Well, first off, if you guessed about the Galaxy Note 6, then you were 100% wrong on that. But, I mean, that's kind of difficult to perceive. So, let's say Galaxy Note 3. You say, okay... Galaxy Note 5, it's going to have real leather on the back instead of fake leather. It's going to have real metal on the sides. It'll have quad HD. It'll have a 6-inch display. It'll have a better stylus that's made out of metal. And it will have, uh, I don't know. I mean, you would have been pretty close. But there's a few things you would have missed out. Notify, remove the removable battery. Remove the, be able to remove the SD card. It removed the USB 3.0 port. So you have just regular micro B. And it was basically just a blown up S6. Whereas the Note 7 was literally a blown up S7. So there you go. Yes, the stylus will always be a differentiator between the Note and S lines. I'm not trying to minimize the importance of the S pen and its features. Keep in mind, this is the same person who literally just said, where is this? Disregarding the S Pen stylus. A little bit contradicting here. So, I'm not trying to minimize the importance of the S Pen. The stylus and specialized software are useful and have many fans. But wouldn't they also work on the Galaxy S8, even if the phone can't also house a stylus like the Note 8 does? No! Oh my god, you're stupid! Have you tried taking a Note S Pen and using it on a Galaxy S8? It doesn't work, right? Because you know how the S Pen works, right? It's not like those regular styluses that you get like in a box of like, with like a 10-pack of pens and crayons. This is a legitimate... Wacom Digitizer, which I know a lot of, that sounds like hoopla to a lot of people, but he uses the same technology that's in drawing tablets. In fact, where's my, where's my broken S pen? Okay, let me, let me switch this up here real quick. Switch this to my face cam. Here's, here's one of my S pens. That broke. Want to see what's inside of this? That is not a regular stylus. You see these copper coils? You see this circuit board in here? This is not a a regular capacitive stylus. You have actual technology in here because this pen has this technology that interacts with the screen. That's why when you go to press it to the screen, it recognizes it before the pen even touches the phone. See, look at that still recognizes it because it can detect that 
it has that technology. Look at that. It's, even though it's broken, it still works. It's just not... You have to brace it a little bit. So, obviously, the biggest selling point is the fact that this is a real Wacom digitizer. It has more pressure levels. It has more software features. And it's conveniently housed inside the phone. Oh, that's not important? Not important. Okay, let's go back to this. And let's not forget, the Samsung did not fix or improve other glaring Galaxy SA features of the Note 8, including the face and iris unlocks that can be hacked and offer a messy overall experience. I've not seen a single video actually talking about, hey, the Note 8 iris scanner is better or worse than the S8. So I don't even know if he can comment on that. But I guess it is safe to assume that they might not have done much with that. But again, did you, he doesn't even say he tested it. If the Galaxy Note is supposed to become a Galaxy S copy of little differences, then why not just incorporate the stylus in the Galaxy S Plus version and be done with it? Yes, I know. It's all about the bottom line and competing against the new iPhones that arrive each fall. That said, the Note may still have a great future as long as Samsung wise finds ways to make it great again. Oh, of course. Gotta throw politics in the mix without even real, with that, like, low key politics, which is a great way to make people click on your article. Oh my god, this clickbait is so awful. So, what he's basically saying is give the Galaxy S a pen. And I'm like, you just said the Note isn't offering enough features, and then you're saying just give the Galaxy S a pen. That's what the Note is. So, you're not happy. So, I think what he's trying to say is don't call it a note unless you have revolutionary features. And then if you don't have revolutionary features, then literally just stick a pen inside the S and be done with it. It's not that simple. You're not Are you an engine? Are you a are you a hardware engineer, sir? What's this guy's name? Chris are you a software engineer? Are you a hardware engineer? Do you work for Samsung? Do you know how these work? Do you know marketing? Do you know why Samsung does this? He disregards the fact, yes, I know it's all about the bottom line. That's business. You really think that Samsung is just going to shoot themselves in the foot because they've been doing this since 2011? They've been... At this market, splitting their market between two markets, between two halves of the year for six years. You're saying they should just abandon that. Now, I was all for the idea of them releasing the Note 8 alongside the S8. Especially after the Note 7 recall, because it means that people who are holding on to the Note 7s can get rid of them quicker. And it also means that they will have to, won't have to be using them. They can get the Note 8 really soon. Except, oh, then you're going to... Remember how I, back whenever I said, oh, you can't make a phone until my two-year contract ends? Imagine if someone bought even the Note 5 the day of release and they're waiting anxiously for the Note 8 and then they find out that the Note 8's coming earlier, much earlier, and they can't get it. Or think about the people who bought the Galaxy S8 and they find out, oh, by the way, the Note 8 is coming out like a day or a week or just much sooner than August, September, October. They're going to be pissed. Because for those people who like to just buy the most expensive phone, which is the Notes, they don't really care about the stylus, but they use it once in a while. Doesn't really hurt if they don't have it, but it's kind of nice to have. They're going to be pissed. You can't please everyone. And this guy is pretty much the best example of that. You really can't please anyone. Again, nothing against this guy. I know he obviously has good intentions. But he's clearly focusing more on clickbait than making a good article. But hey, I guess it worked because I clicked on it. Anyway, guys. Leave your thoughts and comments below. I will be doing my official video about my thoughts and impressions on the Note 8 as soon as I get my hands on it. 
And anyway, guys, look forward to more videos about the Note 8 and about a lot of other things. In fact, my 2017 Galaxy Note 7 review will be going up fairly soon. I don't want to give a date because I'll probably get it wrong. And we'll just have to wait and see. Anyway, guys, this is that GTA fan 720 signing out. I'm not editing this video because I'm lazy and I really just, I mean, there's not really anything I would want to cut from this. I would want to keep it unedited so that way people are like, oh, you missed this, you missed this. People are stupid. So I'm just going to leave it uncut and throw it up there. So if you guys stayed here till this long, thank you. So. Anyway, guys, this is that GTA fan, 720, I'm signing out. Uh, here's my social media accounts. Follow me on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Mino, Google+. Plus. I didn't even tell you my handles. Just try to find them. Anyway, guys, I'm tired. I'm going to go to bed. It's like 1030. You might see this tonight, you might see this tomorrow, who knows. Obviously, it's nighttime now. So, this is that GTA fan 720 signing out. Leave your thoughts in the comments below. And I hope you all have a good one.